Shalom again. Shabbat Shalom. Sen Bet Salam. Sen Bet Salam. Sabbatical peace and greetings. We're in the 41st Torah portion, which is called Phineas. Right, Phineas. And we're going to deal with that, but first we're going to deal with this particular recent um, um, tragedy, this another American tragedy. You understand, which so many people in the media and you see it on the blogs and probably on different comment pages. Or, oh, how did this happen? Or it's nobody's fault. Or you know, this a crazy person, a lone wolf in sheep clothing, in sheep clothing. You understand, one who no one ever suspected because it's a deeper. There's something deeper to this. Philip Zimbardo, we mentioned him before. And he was in the 2020 report, and he said something very, very interesting, something that we all, um, we all knew, but I don't know if everyone all knew that. You know, black people, generally speaking, um, um, even in this kind of fallen state, they, they reflect more the characteristics of God in Christ. In other words, they're more inclined to heroic um, activity, heroic deeds, you know, not just for their own people, not being selfish for their own people, sometimes even more so for others, but still they are more inclined to acts of heroism. And um, Philip Zimbardo, a well-acclaimed um, um, psych a psychologist and researcher, they have actually got statistics on this that people in the city are more likely to display and show heroism than, say, people in the rural parts of um, the country, parts of America, and that those in the city, it's eight times more likely that it will be black people, you understand, men and women, who will display and show heroism, come to somebody else's rescue, you understand, come to someone else's defense, even risk and jeopardize their own life, um, liberty and pursuit of happiness, they will lay down their life to help or save someone else. They're eight times, black folks are eight times more likely to do that than so-called Caucasians or than so-called Europeans. And among the Hispanic population, according to Zimbardo, Philip Zimbardo's Heroic Institute and Research, he um, found that it's Hispanic males that are, I think, four or so, I think if the, the, the data that we recall was correct, four or so times more likely um, to, to do so. They mentioned why, what's the difference between Hispanic women and Hispanic men, which is probably an interesting part to be probed at a different time. Um, but that was very interesting. That, that in itself was very, because we've seen a lot of these things, even some of the pictures from this movie Massacre, from this Batman Massacre, or from this... Um, um, Dark Knight Rises, Lucifer Rising. Now, Philip Zimbardo, he's the same one that did this. If you look it up, you'll find it. There's videos out there. There's blogs on it, which goes into the details of it. And it's, it's like a trauma-based, when, when we talk about trauma-based mind control, the Lucifer effect is really a way of um, scientifically, in psychological terms, explaining the so-called Lucifer, right, the so-called Lucifer um, effect. In other words, where, where so-called good people do bad things, so, so to speak. That's, a, that's one way of quote, end quote, around good and all of that. Because some of the terms, of course, from, from, from a God-based, a job-based perspective are, are misused. You understand? Because Jah said there's none good. You understand? In, in the world, in the seclorum, even those who might, might move and do those acts of charity and kindness you understand? They have a, a higher, you know, like they have a moral order. There's a moral order. And that brings us to a very important part of our study. And I'm going to try to just to go through this basic, and then we'll get into Phineas. You understand? This particular Torah portion, this 41st Torah portion, reading and feeding. So here's where we are. Here's where we are, we're at. We're in right here, um, um, Bar Midbar, Bar Midbar, the Hebrew book of Numbers, right? We're in the Hebrew book of Numbers. We're in the 41st um, Torah portion, right? As of um, the 20th going into the 21st, uh, 2012. Now, I had mentioned this before, and, and this is so interesting. Before this thing even happened, 
I was looking over some older notes, and you might recall the vid that I posted, um, giving some notes to the disciples and everything, you know, about, you know, how to take good notes and, and the importance of um, um, memorializing or documenting, you know, certain important um, facts and findings, whether in biblical studies or just, just what the Holy Spirit shows you to take a good note. And I, I was talking about these smaller books that we sometimes use, these pocketbooks right here. Like um, right here I have the nine areas of people activity. You know, there's nine areas. And it's interesting because um, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, one of our um, very, very uh, important scholars, you understand in the in the Afrocentric, in the in the black community, in the black research community, and she's she is a you could say a a professionally trained. She went through all of the worldly degrees, but she used that knowledge to really help us. You understand know, as the once lost but now found Beta Israel, the downtrodden people, really understand what this, um, what the key to the colors, what this white supremacy, in other words, if you don't understand white supremacy, then everything that you think you know will only confuse you. In an incident like this, as tragic as it is, there's a strong element of white supremacy, but it's not in the common ignorance, you know, just white people, black people. No, it goes much deeper. It's a little more complex than that. But there's nine areas of people activity. Do you know what they are? Let me just go over it. You could take some notes of this and research it a little bit more um, for yourself. She credits um, Dr. N Nellie Fuller, Jr. as being her teacher in this. And so she said that this is basically from his research. That there are nine areas of so-called people activity. What are they? They are economics, education, entertainment. Remember, this was an entertainment sort of event. Labor, law, politics, religion, war, and sex. I will repeat, the nine areas of people activity are economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, war, and sex. Now, Take a note of that. Take that down. Take a note of that because it's going to be very important to really understand that. Because when we talk about white supremacy, we're not talking about these little petty kind of racist kind of things where somebody, I don't like black people, blah, 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 because that, it's been something, we're going to the root, you see. And, and, and the main um, obstacle to people really understanding how could this guy, this murderer, this killer, this, this psychopath, you understand? How could uh, somebody do this? You know what I mean? Shoot so-called indiscriminately, quote, end quote. It's interesting that they, they already jumped out ahead and said it was indiscriminate. The first videos and some of the things seem to show that he did target black people too, but maybe it was the way they say. We don't know. We have to do our own research. We're just addressing what it is that we want to share with our brothers and sisters and others who might be um, interested. So with that being said, we went and found one of our older books here. And this book, I think, uh, we started to jot notes in it from a couple of years ago. Um, I'm trying to find a, a, a date in it. I wasn't as studious in dating it as, 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 I, you know, as I should have been. But um, in this particular um, notes that I have right here, I took a couple of notes. And before this incident was even reported, in fact, we found out about this incident um, um, early in the morning, Friday morning. Um, it's about 7, 7 a.m. or so. Um, we like to check out maybe like the BBC um, news, what's going on, because it's 7 a.m. over here, like in D.C. and in New York. It's 7 a.m. on the eastern seaboard, eastern coast. But in England, across the pond, it is um, 12 um, noon. So when we turned it on, the first breaking story they had was this, this, this shooting in Colorado and this killing of, I think they reported 12 or so people who were killed and um, 50 people who were injured, some of them critically, at this uh, dark night rises. Now, there's a whole heap of violence out there in entertainment, but we're told 
that the violence in video games and the violence on TV and the violence on movie and movies, it does not um, make people violent. This is what they tell us. You know what I'm saying? But then why would they tell us something different since they make their bread and their butter? You see their bread and their butter, and it's connected with those nine areas of, of, of people activity, economics, you understand? Know On a certain level, education. You understand? Know Entertainment, of course. Labor, the people who work in the industry, make money off in the other industries that feed off of that. Um, law, you understand? Know They're covered by law. You, to do this, they can do this, quote, legally according to their law. Since they took God's law out of the picture, they can do this according to their law. Politics, you see how Romney and, and President Obama, how they kind of slowed their roll for, for a moment and, you know, spoke about this incident, you know, being so-called presidential, as it were. Um, religion, you understand? It does deal with religion because a lot of this, this, this entertainment stuff going on, it is enforcing another kind of a new ageism, another kind of religion, you understand? Another kind of religion along with Darwinism and evolution, the chimp monkey god, so forth and so on, of white supremacy. Darwin was a racist. It's very clear. His book, Origin of the Species, if you go Google it, you understand, and I hope they don't suppress it, but if they do, I'm sure it's downloaded elsewhere, and we can show you what the original um, title page of Origin of Species was. It says, um, Preservation of the favored races in the struggle for life. That's the subtitle of Darwin's Origin of Species. You understand? The preservation of the favored races. Now, they would tell us that, well, it's not dealing with a particular white race, black race, Asian, or, or, or Caucasian, Negroid, and Mongoloid. You understand? Even though Mongoloid was also defined as retard, you know, retardism, you know. So they stopped that. They now say Oriental but they still kind of use Caucasian, so they don't use Negroid too much I anymore um, publicly, but it's still there in the books. But Darwin wrote a book, you understand, which they view as scientific. In other words, evolution is viewed to be science. So they say we want science in the classroom, not religion. But really when you get into Darwinism and Darwinist philosophies, in addition to it being racist, it is also religious. It's, it's religious. It's a religion. Why do we say that? Because the belief system, it's not proven. Darwin's origin of species, preservation of the favored races, it's not proven scientifically according to what they really know. A lot of the first facts have been proven to be, you know, the meltdown man, the pitted man, whatever kind of man, Neanderthal. They found out a lot of their, you know, their so-called um, finding of the missing link was, was falsified. You know what I'm saying? Yet it is still um, believed in. It's a belief system. Listen to the scientists carefully. They would not talk about what we know so much, but a lot of what they talk about is what they believe, and they're trying to find facts to go along with their belief. But the subtitle of Darwin's Origin of Species, that's what's interesting, because it says preservation of the favored races in the struggle for life. When you think about the, the whole immigration issue, right, the immigration issue, when you think about even the American Indian issue, when you think about the enslavement of African issue, I mean, these are some major injustices that have been suppressed. They don't even want to discuss these issues. And yet they wonder why is what they see happening happening? You understand? Know How could these, these so-called, um, quote, good, end quote, people, you understand, know do um, bad or evil things, and then not be, the guy didn't have no, the only thing he had was a, a traffic violation. Because they always give each other a pass. You understand, know they always are able to assume the best because it's not so much that the people who do these things and have these biases are consciously racist. But there's a whole, a, a whole um, underground and background to this that is not being addressed at all. So when we heard the, the, the news report, we were shocked. We were like, what? For real? This is, how can we not hear nothing about this? Is, it for, is this an old news thing? This is a new, it sounds just like things we've already heard before. But this is a new thing going on. And what was interesting is that before um, 
before, I think it was like Thursday, sometime Thursday, we were looking through this book again, and we found some notes that we had took down from that video that we mentioned earlier. Um, uh, what's this called again? Um, the, Cross, the Cross TV video. Oh, um, they sold their souls for rock and roll. And they sold. It's a four-part. It's a four-part. It's out there. You can find it. And it, it's, it's very popular. It's a, it's a Christian um, production, but at least in spirit, dealing with dealing with the the gospel, they are correct. In other words, they they are naming evil for what evil is in the context of what they are presenting, and it's truthful in that sense. And I'm speaking about Christ's humanity. You understand? But they're speaking about the teachings of the Bible and the facts of what happened in the in the Columbine um, the Columbine killing. That a lot of those innocent um, you know, white boys and girls and people, they were asked, did they believe in Jesus? They were asked, did they believe in God? And when they admitted their faith, they were killed. A lot of that has been suppressed. Some of it got into the news initially, but immediately afterwards, it was suppressed. And they're doing the same thing in this incident. It's not the movies that do it. You know, it's not the movies. It's like the movie. I heard one psychiatrist say uh, on, on, on one of these shows, she said, you probably saw it too, she says, um, like, the movie doesn't have any role. You know, like, Hollywood and the movies have no role, like, good or bad, to play. You understand? In, in this. It's not the movie at all. So why did he go there saying that I am the Joker? You know, and this doesn't mean that we have to suppress the... You see, it's not so much just the entertainment. There's something wrong with it, but it's focused heavily violent, but it's because they have suppressed... God in the public discourse. You know what I'm saying? They're saying that, well, people who believe in God did evil things, and even slavery was based on a group of white folks who believed that they were the children of God, and they enslaved Africans, and they were delusional. You know what I'm saying? Basically. You see, if, if they dealt with that, then that's that. But that does not mean that that is what the Bible truly or really teaches. So what has happened is that ones have come in Christ's name, and has blasphemed the way of Christ, and then so many other folks have turned off to it. They said, well, if those people who are racist talking about they believe in God and seeing what they're doing to other people, then I don't want no part of it. You understand? Know but instead of having an open discussion, let us discuss everything, they say, no, we want to suppress God in the classroom, but then they can bring in Disney, they can bring in things of the world, you know, that clearly have an overt satanistic or, or diabolical um, agenda. And what most folks don't want to recognize is that Satanism is a religion. It's a religion. Anybody who's into Satanism will tell you that they consider themselves a religion, Church of Satan, so forth and so on. Even in the U.S. Army, they, you know, they, they have um, say, you know, satanic rituals or whatnot for their people who believe in that. So it's considered, so what we see is a suppression of the true good news, the perversion of the gospel and the suppression of it, and the rise of this other kind of philosophy, right? Now, how does this connect with the Midbar? How does this connect with this Torah portion? Now, we, 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 we touched on this right here. I'm sure you all got this down. I want to erase this for a moment so we can get into this. Let's see if we can take this off. Um, see, yeah, we have to use some water on this right there because it's a little bit, um, we left it up a little bit too long. But in that documentary, while we do this, just, just pay attention for a moment. We'll try to clear this. In that documentary, um, the Cross TV documentary about um, they sold their souls for rock and roll, it's kind of explaining what has changed that we have all of this at a time when we should not. You know what I mean? We're supposed to be in a post-racial society. Right? We're supposed to be in a time of so called equality. I mean, and you see what they're doing with the Mexicans and, 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 and other people. People are biasing them. And if you really knew the true history, if true history was taught in, in the public schools and in schools, you would find out that this land belonged to them. This land belonged to them. And that the people who took this land away from them used a religious, a biblical pretext. And then when other people got wise to that game, what did they do? When other people get wise to that game, they say, well, let's take the Bible out of classroom. Let's take the Bible out of, out of, but they still have God on the money. But they don't have the name of that God. 
You see, they don't have the name of that God. While a lot of foolish people believe that that God on the money is the same God that's spoken of in the Bible. It's not. You see, it's not. In fact, most of the founding fathers wasn't so much Christians. They were deists. You understand? They were deists. Well, we're not going to get into that right now. I don't think we have time to get into a deist. You understand? But just take that, you know, take that particular idea, um, note it, take it to the bank, cash it in, and see what you get out of it. Because there's a lot that's embedded in that particular, in that particular um, idea right there. So now what we want to touch on is some of the notes that we found. And it's interesting that we found these notes and we did not even know that this particular incident had occurred. 